What's up everybody, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar, here to show you a fun little game you can do on your downtime if you ever want to get better at the fretboard. It seems to work for a lot of my students and I actually used it myself to really develop the fretboard knowledge that I have today. So what we need to do is we need to know the order of the notes and how they climb up the string first of all, just to get ready for this exercise. So you have to know the way the notes ascend and eventually descend. What we'll do is we'll just take a look at, starting from A, we'll just climb up the musical scale using all natural notes, okay? So from A to B is called a whole step. And on guitar, that's going to be two frets. So for example, if this is A, which it is, B is gonna be a whole step above that, which is two frets. From B to C, this is interesting, suddenly it's just a half step. That's one fret, half step. So you can think of B and C as being stuck together. That's what I visualize when I'm climbing up these strings. And then from C to D is a whole step, two frets. From D to E is a whole step. From E to F is another half step. So E and F are stuck together as well, visualize that. And then from F to G is a whole step. And then G, some people say H is next when they don't know anything about music theory, but it goes back to A and that's a whole step. So G to A, whole step, two frets. You gotta get really good at this concept in order to do this exercise correctly. Uh, so you, remember, B and C stuck together, E and F stuck together, and then everything will make sense when you start climbing the string. So let's start the game. What I want you to do is I want you to find a C note on the sixth string, which is your E string, okay? If you climb up real quick, if you look at your open E, and then you go to the very next fret, that's a half step. Remember, open strings you wanna consider here, and the half step is here, so that's F. Whole step G, whole step to A, whole step to B, half step, remember B and C are stuck together, there's your C note. So what I want you to do is find that note. You could think eighth fret if you want to, but you don't necessarily have to do that right away. Let go of it, look at it, go back to it, and say C when you hit it. The object of this game is to get through all six strings, finding the exact same note on every string. So what we're going to do is we're going to find C now on the next string. So the next string is the A string, the fifth string. If you can count up really quick, this one's kind of easy, because open A, B is a whole step above A, and then B and C are stuck together, so bam, there's your C right there. Third fret. And you probably recognize that if you know open C chord, because it's the, what your ring finger is on first for that chord. So if you go back and look, on the sixth string, remember where that C was. On the fifth string, remember where that C was. Or where it is, I should say. Back and forth, C, 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 and so on. Then you guessed it, you go to the next string, which is the D string. This one's gonna be tricky, okay? Check it out. Open D, E is a whole step above that. E and F are stuck together, remember, so F is here. G is going to be a whole step above that, A is going to be a whole step above that, so is B, and then C is a half step above B, since they're stuck together. There's your C, it's way up at the 10th fret on that D string. Now some of you guys might already know this, but the double dots of every string is the octave point of that string. So if I play open D, and then I play the 12th fret of that same string, that's also D. So here's a quick little trick for you. If you go backwards from D a whole step, that's C. That's a quicker way to visualize that string, okay? So if the note you're looking for is closer to this end of it, it's okay to work backwards if you know your, your octaves, okay? So let's start over. Let's go back to E, the E string, I should say. Find C on that string. Then let's go to the fifth string, the A string, and find C. Now let's go to the D string, the fourth string, and find C. They're not gonna be the same octaves, by the way. They're gonna change, but it's still gonna be the C tone. Those were all three Cs, okay? Now we're on the third string, the G string, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna count up G, A, B, C. Notice I'm going quicker now, because I think hopefully you have the concept down. So here's C, that's gonna be the fifth fret of the third string. The next string is the B string, and this one's the easiest one, because watch, B to C, since it's a half step away. And that's also in the C chord, you'll probably notice that. Okay, then we're on the first string, which is E, so it's going to be the same fret as what was on the sixth string, okay? So that's going to be the eighth fret. Kind of a way to cheat a little bit, but... All right, so now let's start over. Sixth string, eighth fret, that's a C. The next string. Next. Continue on. 
the phone, all the C's, okay? That might take a while if you're just brand new to this. But go ahead and do that slowly. Sometimes it, it helps to just do it at your own pace in the beginning and then eventually set a really slow metronome and try to get the next note as soon as the next click happens. It kind of forces your brain into remembering things a little bit quicker. Pretty soon you have this like crazy vision of the neck. Everywhere you look, you could see the C's, which is very helpful at first. You can go backwards too. So you can be like, there you go. The next step, once you get that down pretty well, you'll know where all the C's are. And by the way, if you ever need to find a note that's close to C, like B, it's easy. You find the C and then you just go back a fret. So that can be used as a shortcut right off the bat. But what I want to do is a lot of people don't know what the next note should be that they should find. And what I use is called the circle of fifths. We're going to study that a lot on the website. It's going to be a huge part of our learning. But for today, I'll just give you some of the beginning steps of the uh, circle of fifths. We're going to start with C and then we're going to go to the G note. Okay. G is a fifth of C. So we're going to start to go around the circle. If you're familiar with the circle, you understand what I'm talking about. We're going to be going clockwise around the circle. So if we find G on every string, here's what's going to be going through your head probably at first. Okay. So on the E string, F, G. There it is right there. First note of a G chord. So you can see that. The next string is an A string. So we have a little ways to travel here. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There it is. You can do that backwards trick again if you want to. The double dots is A, because the open string is A. Go backwards a whole step, it's G. So we have G and G. The next string is D, D, E, F, G. I'm going fast now. Now we run into an interesting thing. The next string is G already, so you can just hit it open if you want to. Some people like to go to the 12th fret just for fun. And then the next string is B. You could find it. Uh, B, C, D, E, F, G. G is kind of in a weird spot on that B string, but it's an important one to remember. It's on the 8th fret. And then you're back to the E string, which is going to be the 3rd fret again, just like it was on the 6th string. So really you only have to do five strings because the, both of these are E's, so you kind of kill two birds with one stone in that case. Okay, so all the G's. Open. Go backwards too. The next few I want you to find are going to be D, A, E, and B. And then we're going to stop there around the circle of fifths because then there's going to start to be sharps. It gets a little more confusing and I'd rather have you guys do natural notes for right now and then worry about sharps or flats later once you get the hang of it, okay? So just try this game. It's kind of fun. If, even if you're watching Netflix or something, just say, I'm going to pick a note, uh, B flat, let's say once you get more experience. Then everywhere you look, you should be able to find a B flat pretty quick. And if you can't, go back a step and start to find easier notes first. Work your way to the hard ones later, okay? So what's really cool about this is right off the bat, if you start to do power chords, let's say you, you know a song starts on A and then goes to F sharp, for example. Well, you're going to see that in multiple places now. So let's say you're here in A, and before you only knew this F sharp. Well, maybe now when you start on this A, you can see this F sharp and have a whole other place to play the same power chord. Or you can start scales in different locations. Let's say if you're doing like D major, some D major thing. Well, if you can see the D up here, you can start to play scales anywhere you want. You can see a D way up here, you start to play things way up here. So it gives you permission to jump around the entire neck over time. This is just a quick way to get you started on navigating uh, so that you don't feel like you're stuck in one place all the time. And you won't feel insecure when someone asks you what note you're playing which was in my case. All right, guys, hopefully that helps you out. We have a lot of videos coming out soon. A ton of videos going on the real website, especially. Uh, we're just kind of giving uh, YouTube a few here and there just to kind of keep keep things exciting. But uh, be sure to check out theartofguitar.com. That's where all my main teaching goes. And I will catch you guys soon. Thanks.